Well, once in a while I hear somebody talk about natural. What's natural? A natural finish or anything else we might refer to in woodworking or wood turning. I've been watching Roy Underhill. He's a traditional woodworker. He's had a program on TV for 30 years and I probably watched just about every episode he's ever produced and he never turns on the power switch. Well, to me, that's, that's pretty natural. When I was a boy in Ohio, running through the woods and uh, carving our name in every tree we could find that had uh, some nice smooth bark, well, that was nature, that was natural, until we took our knife out and, and messed up the bark with our initials. Today, I'm gonna mill something out of this piece of wood, this log, and I've been told it's black locust, okay? Not really sure, it doesn't matter. It's a nice, hard, heavy wood. So we're gonna go from nature and add a little culture, the hand of man or the hand of woman. Well, anyway, so I've got my fro, and you've seen this in some of my videos. This is a very, very old uh, milling tool for milling wood. And the top, at the top of my log, I've got some pretty severe splits. So I'm going to go right along these cracks here, these splits. And somewhere outside covered in piles of snow is my proper uh, wooden mallet. And right now I'll just use this little bit of Russian olive log. And we're going to just cut into this. And I'm going to mill up a box blank. And then we're going to go turn it on the lathe. Now, if you ever do this and you have a fro or perhaps a, a metal wedge of some sort, you don't want to hit that with a metal hammer. That's not a good idea. So I think I need to go down just a little bit farther. There we go. And that's what a fro does. That was, <clears throat> so that worked pretty good. Now I probably got a good three inch section right here. So I'm gonna keep milling this down. <clears throat> Get my box blank out of this. And here's another crack right here. Now Roy Underhill would say when you're milling wood, you exploit the lines of weakness. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going down into the end grain and splitting this piece of wood. <clears throat> we'll find that split right there, and this should be fairly easy. And there we go. Now years ago, believe it or not, I used to have a shaving horse. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I found out I really didn't use it very much, so I took it apart and used the wood for something else. But anyway, what I can do with this is take down the corners with my little axe right here. And if I had my shaving horse, I could really do a good job of making this a little bit rounder. But it's not too bad. A little bit off right here. Now, take my word for it, that's a, a lovely piece of wood and it's really hard and probably very wet. So, probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rustic box and it's going to warp. That's okay. Now, we're going from nature to culture. So, I'm going to take this little uh, piece of wood from, from my log and take it over to my bandsaw and cut off the ends here that are a little bit split and then we'll go over to the lathe and we'll add more culture to this piece of wood. Thank you. 
All right, I got my little bit of log chucked up into some nice two inch uh, jaws of my scroll chuck. I don't have the tailstock brought up for support, so this is a little bit uh, precarious for a fixing, but wish me luck. I got my face shield on, so don't try this at home. All right, that's about 90% round. Now when you're doing something like this, you don't have to go all the way and make a spigot right now. Now, what I'm trying to do is make a safer fixing. This isn't perfect, there's no spigot on there, but I'm gonna just take this out and reverse it. Doesn't take much. And you can probably see on the other end of this little uh, partial log that it's really really out of balance not trued up and it wasn't uh, wasn't in there very good so this is a little bit better a little bit safer make that really tight All right, I trued up the end, I took a pencil, and I made a mark, and I'm trying to approximate this dimension right here. That's what I need for my scroll chuck, so I don't think you can see this. I'm going to remark that. That's where my spigot needs to be. All right, there we go. Now I have a proper spigot. I'm gonna reverse it in my scroll chuck. So now we're gonna have a really, really good secure fixing on this piece of wood. It's very wet. I like that. I can tell when I'm cutting it. Cuts very nicely. Make a little box out of this of some sort, a rustic box. So I'm going to go back to my spindle roughing gouge and true up this cylinder. I think I've taken most of the splits out. The end looks pretty good right there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a shop pencil and mark the dimensions of my box. All right, now, this is locust. I'm not sure if it's black locust or honey locust. We have a lot of honey locust locally that we can get. Very beautiful piece of wood, and I may rough turn this to a point 
and dry it in my microwave for a little bit because it's really going to warp. Now I promised I was going to lay this out. This is going to be my lid area right here. So I've readjusted my camera. You can see this center part where the joint is going to be. This is the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just define this a little bit better with a parting tool. Now this area right here, this recess if you will, is going to be my, my tenon in my box. So I'm just kind of anticipating the uh, depth of that right now. Now something else that's not a bad idea to do is to mark your grain alignment. I've got some pretty distinctive grain running through this. It's all nice straight grain, but it's uh, pretty distinctive. But I'll just go ahead and mark this with my shot pencil. And that's where the grain lines up before I cut this. Now you may have noticed there at the very end I switched to my left hand. I think that's much safer than trying to bend over the headstock with your left hand. So anyway, let's move on to hollowing the lid of this box. All right, let me catch you up on my project. Turning a little lidded box. So here's the lid. And I've got that hollowed out and kind of roughed out. Yesterday I spent some time with my microwave drying this piece of wood just a little bit. So I'm going to complete the inside of this. And as I mentioned before, this is a kind of a rough turn box. I may just use this to hold some screws or nails or something. So let me proceed. I'm going to finish the inside of this. Use a box scraper mostly. And I'm going to create a, a nice parallel recess right here that'll be the join for my box. Okay, now oftentimes when I'm doing a threaded project, it's very critical to have a nice parallel sided recess that's going to be the join for your base. And what I do is I just take a drill bit and I put it in that recess and hold it in there and then sight down the drill bit and line that up with my bedways. And I can see I'm, I'm about you know, like one degree off, that's really good. So I think I'm, I'm in good shape there. All right, I've got the base of my box in my chuck jaws. And I'm fine tuning the fit.
I'm still just a little bit tight. I want to make this fit tight enough so I can do a jam chuck and uh, finish off my lid without bringing my tailstock up. That's always fun to do. I could probably jam that on there, but I, I may never get it off. Now you notice a number right here. Yesterday when I was drying these pieces, I wrote the grams on that and then I keep uh, putting it in my microwave until that stops losing moisture. I think I'm gonna stop right there. That's running very true. So I'm gonna just do a little bit of shaping on this and take this uh, old tenon off there and I'll probably just uh, make that part of the lid detail. And I'm sure I've got plenty of thickness in there. Now here's the top of my box lid all finished and I'm going to take this lid off there and do a little bit more fine tuning on this. This is on there really really tight and it's wet and I'm going to have trouble getting that off. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a point tool and just put a little V groove in there so I can get a knife or something in there to separate my lid and my base. While I'm at it, I'll put a little detail in there. All right, there we go. Now, I need to fine tune that fitment. And I may just leave that for a day or so and let that dry. And it'll probably be a loose fitting lid when I get done with that. There we go. Now if I need to put that back on there and do any more turning, I will simply put a little piece of tissue paper in there and that'll be fine. I'm going to decide on a shape for my box. I may go look in my gallery and look at some pieces and get some inspiration and put a little bit more uh, shape into this. So my lid is too loose, so I'm going to take a piece of tissue paper and I'm going to jam that on there. Cut off the excess. Okay, that's running true. Now, if my lid were even looser, I would have wet that. But I think there's enough moisture in that wood that uh, will be okay. Alright, now, I've got a shape in mind. I got the camera readjusted so you can see what I'm doing.
Now I'm showing you the very top of my lid and I'm going to use a skew chisel to clean that up and I went over that one time and I got a pretty nice finish and what I'm thinking of doing with this little project here, this uh, nature to culture project, I'm going to finish this without doing any sanding and I do that occasionally just to kind of see how good I can get that finish. Let me uh, go over this one more time with my skew chisel. Well, I can't do any better than that. I'm going to move on to the side of my my box and uh, kind of complete the shape of this. Now I'm going to do a little bit of uh, detail on the bottom of this and I have to keep in mind that this is end grain. Okay, So I'm going to take a little quarter inch bowl gouge and work on that and try to cut across the grain as best I can. And that's working pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to take a smaller skew chisel, do a little bit of detailing right here, but I have to be careful not to hold that in a cutting orientation. I need to hold that level as a scraper. And I'm going into end grain. Alright, I went ahead and finished the bottom with my skew chisel, held in a scraping orientation, and that's good. So I'm done with my box, let me take this out of the chuck, put the lid on and I'll show it to you. Well, it is always fun to take a log from nature and turn it into something. Mill it down the old-fashioned way with an axe or a fro and find out what's inside. In this case, we found a nice little box that I'll hang around the shop and put something in there, maybe some screws or something. It's probably going to warp, but that's okay. No pressure on this kind of project. You're just doing it for fun. and. And I appreciate you hanging in there with me and watching all of my videos. It's uh, Christmas time this year, December something, 2018. And I'm going to try to put this up um, oh, around Christmas and wish you all a happy holiday. Oh, thank you very much for watching and uh, like my videos, share them, and I will talk to you next time.
Yeah, here we go.